previously on Science for All. Why is it that Thai is so interesting? Why is it that everyone talks about Thai? Why is it that we learn Thai very early on in schools? Why is it that there's such a thing as a Thai day? Why not an E day or a I day? Imagine that an imaginary day. That'd be well, can you imagine this? And now the answer. The thing that blows my mind about Pi is that Pi is really everywhere. You see Pi where you don't expect it. Obviously you see it in geometry. I guess you know that it is the ratio of the circumference by the diameter of any circle. And when you think about it, that's already pretty cool. I mean, you take any circle, you can take, for instance, the circle that goes around the whole universe, you divide it by the diameter, you always find in any geometrical object where there is some sort of thing as a circle, there's going to be pi. But what's amazing about pi is that even if there is no circle, pi can pop up. For instance, in the 14th century, the Indian mathematician Madhava proved that pi was exactly equal to 4 minus 4 third plus 4 fifth minus 4 seventh and so on to infinity. And there's no circle here, I mean. Where's the circle? In the 18th century, the great Leonhard Euler, one of the giants of mathematics, was playing around with similar infinite sums, and in many of them he would see pi pop up, like for instance in this sum of inverse squares, or more famously in this equation, ei pi plus 1 equals 0. Euler was so amazed by this equation that he went on asserting that this was a proof of the existence of God. Euler, come on. Be serious. So Pi had moved from geometry to calculus, but Pi would go so, so much further than that. For instance, it would appear in arithmetic. So if you take two numbers, you can decompose them into prime fractals. And then the natural question is, what is the probability that if I take two numbers randomly, they share no prime fractal? Well, surprisingly, the probability that two numbers taken randomly share no prime factor is exactly 6 over pi squared. Wait, what? I know! Pi also pops up in some probability theory problems. For instance, if you take needles and you just throw them on a grid, then the probability that the needle intersects the lines of the grid is actually closely related to pi. If you want to know more, check this awesome number 5 video about this Buffon needle experiment. Now there are lots of other areas of physics and mathematics where pi just pop up. Uh, let me tell you about just one more. So when you listen to music, you actually hear vibrations of the air pressure that's around your ears. Anyways, the thing is that that's not how we write music. Music is not written in terms of air vibrations. It's written in terms of frequencies. What's quite amazing is that there's this perfect translation between well, air pressure variations and frequencies. The frequencies I'm talking about are the notes of, the mu of music that you usually listen to. And there's the natural translation that occurs between the two, which is known as the Fourier transformation. And what's quite amazing is that when you do this translation, there's one factor that comes into play. And this factor is, well, guess what? Pi! Actually, the square root of pi. It really blows my mind to think that pi just pops up in so many different areas of mathematics. And that makes pi so intriguing, so interesting. But that's not the most intriguing part about pi. Trust me. The thing that I find mind-blowing about pi is that, despite it being everywhere, it's extremely hard to capture it, to, to just seize it. So back in ancient Greece, Pythagoras thought that everything in nature was made of whole number ratios. 2 over 3, 3 over 4, 5 over 8, stuff like that. However, pi cannot be written as such a fraction. Pi is not a ratio, it's not rational, it's irrational. According to legend, Pythagoras actually drowned one of his men for saying that the square root of 2 was not rational. Pi is not rational. Take that, Pythagoras, and you can't even drown me because guess what? I'm alive and you're dead. And the fact that pi is not rational means that it's very, very, very hard to capture it, to, to seize it. 
In fact, it's so hard to get a hand on pie that the Indiana states in the US actually try to pass a bill to capture pie. They try to pass a bill to force pie to be equal to 3.2. Now this bill went through committees, uh, went through the education committee in the House of Representatives, and they obviously didn't know what they were doing because they passed the bill. Meanwhile, serious mathematicians try to capture pi using their most powerful tools, equations. But even then, they couldn't capture pi because pi cannot be captured using equations. Pi is transcendental. And this literally means that pi transcends algebra, which is pretty cool. So equations cannot capture pi. What can? How can we capture pi? How can we know anything about pi? Truth is, pi is still hardly known. For instance, we don't even know if it is a normal number. What do you mean? It's transcendental. How can it be normal? If you take a number randomly in your head, uh, like, like really, really randomly, then you'd expect that its digits are really random. Technically, what I mean is that each digit is drawn independently according to a uniform distribution. And that's quite a big deal. If pi is normal, it means that in its digits, in some sense, you could find every number. Let me take this one step further. Instead of using the digits from 0 to 9, let me assume that I'm in base 27 and that I'm using as digits the letters from A to Z and I'm also including the space so that we actually have what looks like words in the decimals of pi. Now the big question is, does writing pi entirely mean that I am going to write any word? Well, if pi is normal, then you'd expect any word to come up within pi. So you could find words like car or bike or sign. All the words of the dictionary would be in pi. All the sentences of a book would be in pi. All the books written by mankind would be in pi. Everything that is in our universe would actually be in pi if pi is normal. So most mathematicians think that pi is normal even though we don't have any proof. I think it would be quite amazing if pi is normal. I mean, it's a number that we've chosen really abnormally because it's a simple ratio in the circle and it appears everywhere in mathematics. It's really abnormal. And yet somehow this number that is very abnormal, could it be that it actually is normal? That sounds crazy. But the alternative is even better. Imagine if someone could prove that pi is not normal then it will crush out all the intuition that we have about our beloved number. And in the end, this is really what makes pi so interesting. is the fact that, well, everyone knows pi, but no one knows knows pi. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next time we're going to talk about Pluto, because Pluto, as you may know, has been recently demoted. It's no longer a planet. Get over it. And it's interesting because I think one day, hopefully sooner than later, pi is also going to be demoted. Because pi is actually wrong. We should use tau. If you've never heard of tau, it's because of our societies. They don't let me talk, but in truth, we're doing it all wrong. We should use tau and not pi. So if you've never heard of tau, please check this video by my heart, in which he explains very well why pi is just wrong, it's just not the right number, just like Pluto is not a planet. And if you want to know why Pluto is not a planet, well, bear with me. So my question for you for next time is not why is it that Pluto is no longer a planet, that's an easy question. What I want you to think about is why is it that Pluto ever was a planet and why is it that so many textbooks just got it all wrong. You can send me your answers on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and also subscribe to this channel so that you can have the answers to all of your questions and all of my questions more precisely. I've also put two links here to send for articles uh, that are related to Pi and I want you to check them out, please. 
and also here below are one link to the first video of this series and this link here to the next video so if you're watching this video in not the very near future but in the not that far future but sort of in between the future then there'll be a link here that points to the, the answer video that's going to tell you everything that I need to know about Pluto. Thanks for watching and see you next time!